Well, hello, it's Kirsten Lee Bell. Welcome in. It's Monday night. How are you? I'm wearing my Be Defiant gear tonight. I was doing a Facebook Live today in the group. Do you guys know about the group? Do you know about the group? It's called Ditch Insulin Resistance for Women. You can go to my website, kirstenleebelt.com, and there's a Facebook blue button there for you. You can jump in. So every month we do a challenge, a five-day challenge, because the whole thought process is that you can stack your months. You go, you, we do the challenge at the beginning. We do like ingredient trade-outs. We do pantry. I take you into my fridge. I clean my fridge once a month. Who doesn't want to know that? Uh, we do supplementation, we do a recipe, all the good things. And then you can nail the month. Who wants to nail April so that you are one month closer to summer and doing something better for your body so that you're ready? Because if your insulin and or your sugars are high, you can't lose weight. Okay. So anyway, so I was in the group today and I was doing my live because it's April 1st and I was talking about how... Um, I actually I didn't even have my hat on. I was just my shirt. And I said, because this is this is actually for this was a like a business conference. However, point being that it is very imperative that as you are making shifts and changes to your mind and to your habits, that you really do become very defiant. Because you have to become defiant to your old habits. You have to become defiant to your comfort zone. You have to become defiant to things that make you scared. Like maybe you're scared to even try a new recipe. Maybe you're scared to like change out your pantry. Like maybe you're scared to do simple things just because you're thinking to yourself, <laughs> join Kirsten. It's the best group. Jacqueline, <laughs> you're so sweet. It's the best group. You guys have no idea. I'm just kidding. <laughs> you're so sweet. Um, but you do, you have to really, actually, it's an intentional decision to become defiant to the things that, that hold you back. And sometimes we don't pay attention. And I'm going to get into cortisol here in just a second, but sometimes we don't pay attention. Like we're just going along in life, right? And we're not even noticing that maybe we're choosing to not do certain things because of a, like, maybe it makes us feel vulnerable or maybe somebody in the past made a negative comment about our ability to, to try something or that never works out or whatever. And we have to be super conscious of lies that have come into our lives that hold us back. So be defiant, okay? Let's be defiant in April so that you can literally just crush the month. And if you need help with that, go to my website, first last name, kirstenleebelt.com. Um, men here as well, medic for, oh, that is awesome. I do have male clients. They aren't in the Facebook group because it's for women, but I do have male uh, customers, absolutely. So very, very good. Wow, a medic for 41 years, that's amazing. God bless you. That's a tough, that's a, that's so interesting that you're on here because we're going to talk about cortisol. That's a high stress job. Oh my gosh. Very high stress. So, so, um, you know, I, I tell my story a lot and I do it because I want people to understand that this comes from a very honest place for me that, you know, when I grew up, I grew up with an insulin dependent type two dad that, um, you know, he gave himself shots twice a day and, I just grew up with a lot of assumptions and a lot of incorrect thinking about how uh, type two is genetic only and that there's really nothing you can do about it and all of these pieces. And that's just not true. And so it's really important that people actually have hope and that people um, have a different way of thinking. And so that's kind of what we dove into a little bit today where we were talking about how we've really been indoctrinated and marketed to, to believe certain things and how we just have to, you know, you know, it's kind of like talk to the hand, all the marketing, all of the naysayers, all of the negative Nellies that want to tell us that it's just because of our own willpower and we're just a bunch of losers, so to speak. Nobody always usually says that to your face, but, you know, it kind of gets in our head, you know, and we think that we just don't have what it takes. Well, here's another piece of the puzzle. Um, in talking about insulin resistance, you know, we talk a lot about how when your insulin and or your sugars are high, you have to get them to come down in order to make any headway on your weight. But nobody's ever taught this because 
we're not taught that insulin is a hormone. We're not taught that when it's, when it's high or when your sugars are high, that your body literally is you're stuck. And so unfortunately what happens is when we go to the doctor, we'll get glucose labs ran, but we don't get fasting insulin done. And that would actually really help us to know, you know, if we're insulin resistant. Well, another key component and insulin causes a lot of belly fat, right? And so that's the belly fat that we get really frustrated with. Um, but cortisol really plays a, a part of this also. Now, I think we already know. I mean, I think most people know that inflammation is a very, very, very big issue. But we have to understand what is the correlation between inflammation and cortisol. And remember, I am not a doctor. So this medic here, I am not a doctor or I don't have any letters behind my name. But what I did do was I, I'm just... I just grew up in a very medically, um, dysfunctional is the wrong word, heavy medical universe, lots of medical stuff going on all the time and nothing ever matched up. Nothing ever made sense all the way to the very end when my dad died, he was 63 years old and he had a lazy Susan of medication. And I just wanted to know why if he was on all this medication was he dead? Like, I don't understand. Don't we live in, you know, the 20th century at the time? What's wrong with this picture? And so as I have studied over the years now, um, because this really begged a lot of questions for me, like, okay, so if it's not genetic, then what's going on? And da, 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 da. And I, and I wanted to understand, you know, and, and now I have all of these memories flooding about the foods that he would eat that were all wrong. But that's what he was told to eat. And I think people are still told to eat the same foods today. But anyway, let's get into some cortisol conversation. And I'm going to tell you a couple of things that I have done. And uh, they may or, you know, may or may not interest you. And uh, I would love to know. If you're on the replay, always tell me where you're coming in from. Because I love to know where people are coming in from. That's so much fun for me. Um, or if you're on, you can tell me too. So cortisol is a hormone. Just like insulin is a hormone, right? And so this is your stress hormone. And... Um, Basically, it's produced by your adrenal glands to help your body, you know, uh, like deal with stress, right? So it plays a really crucial role, actually, in regulating your inflammation. Well, inflammation has been spoken about as, and I don't think you can say it like with all confidence, maybe you can, depending upon where you're saying it, but inflammation is like the core, the very foundation of like disease, period. Like it's, it's a stinker. It's a problem and we have issues with inflammation. Um, so chronic, chronically elevated levels of cortisol come as a result of stress and it can indirectly contribute to the inflammation in your body through various mechanisms. So your immune system dysregulation, inflammation is going to just mess up your immune system. The goal is to, is to bring down inflammation as much as you possibly can. Um, and high levels of insulin, when you're insulin resistant and your cell won't take the insulin and the glucose anymore, your pancreas just keeps on creating insulin and insulin, high levels of insulin is high inflammation in your body and you don't want that. But cortisol is known to have immunosuppressive effects. Did you know that? It means that it can dampen the activity of the immune system. That's just amazing. And it... Um, and it messes with your anti-inflammatory signals. Increased blood sugar levels is highly inflammatory. And so again, of course, we talk about that all the time with insulin resistance, right? Cortisol is involved in regulating your blood sugar levels. So it's involved in regulating your, um, your inflammation and now in your blood sugar levels by promoting gluconeogenesis, the synthesis of glucose from non-carbohydrate sources and reducing glucose uptake by tissues. Chronically elevated cortisol levels, such as those seen in conditions of chronic stress, who has chronic stress? Maybe you don't want to admit it, but you know, there's a, you know, that I don't know if you're still on here, but being a medic, that is like chronic stress. My daughter just had a baby and she had a baby at home a couple weeks ago. He's just adorable, of course. His name is Ethan. He's a sweetie pie. But I was talking to the midwife and I said, no, you've done this for like, I don't even know, over 30 years, like over 400 babies. 
this, almost all of them are born in the middle of the night. I said, ah, uh, so how's your cortisol? And she kind of laughed <laughs> because she's like, oh, she only allows, you know, so many, like, like basically she makes it so that it's about one a month um, because there's, it just between all of the visits that are happening with any given mom, but then that late night and you don't know. And like my daughter, hers was two weeks early. So you get that phone call, man, and you are, that's it. You're out the door, right? So chronically elevated um, blood sugar levels um, or your cortisol is supposed to help regulate your blood sugar, regulate your inflammation. But if you have chronically elevated cortisol, it's really hindering these issues or these, the things that it's supposed to help with. Disruption of the gut mi microbiota, chronic stress and elevated cortisol levels. Come on. Who doesn't feel like they have, who feels like their gut is really well balanced? Like you, you kind of got it down. You kind of got your gut figured out. You don't feel like maybe, um, maybe inflammation in your gut is really that big of an issue like anymore. Like you, because you got it figured out. Hey, break out the coconut cream pie. <laughs> Julie, it's all gone. <laughs> It's all gone. Are you kidding me? Oh, yeah, I know. That coconut cream pie, by the way, it's uh, I just did a post on it. It was so good. We made that for uh, Easter. It was it's amazing. It's sugar free. It's gluten free. It's amazing. Anyway, um, you are hysterical. So your gut is such on. Um, we kind, we kind of know this. We know this enough to think to ourselves, gosh, maybe I should be eating kombucha. Maybe I should be eating more kefir. Maybe I should be having more yogurt. We kind of know enough. But I feel like we don't do enough to really nail the gut down. That's kind of, it's a big, big piece of the puzzle. So Julie, you're laughing. You're so funny. Um, uh, so chronic stress and elevated cortisol levels have been shown to disrupt the balance of your gut. The community of microorganisms that inhabit the gastrointestinal tract, um, dysbiosis of the gut, can lead to increased intestinal permeability, leaky gut. So chronic stress, now you can't really help your inflammation like you're supposed to. You can't help your blood sugar like you're supposed to. Leaky gut is connected. Impaired tissue repair, cortisol can interfere with tissue repair processes by inhibiting collagen synthesis. That's fascinating. Inhibiting your collagen th synthesis. Listen, y'all, we don't want that. <laughs> We don't want our collagen to be impaired, not at all. You found a Rebel lactose-free keto ice cream pistachio. Yes, they do make that. Yum. I bet that was really good. Dreamy. Yeah, I know. Julie, seriously, I can't do that every day. <laughs> I was just talking about this with my son last night. Look at eating for your blood group for inflammation. Oh, that's interesting. I've actually never, oopsie, I've never researched that. That's super interesting. Um, and an activation of the sympathetic nervous system. So this is the last one on here. Chronic stress and elevated cortisol levels can activate the sympathetic nervous system, which is your fight or your flight response, okay? Leading to increased release of stress hormones such as adrenaline and nora, noradrenaline. Activation of the sympathetic nervous system can, pro can promote inflammation by inducing the release of pro-inflammatory uh, cytokines and activating inflammatory pathways in various tissues and organs. And so, you know, we have so many different reasons why we have higher inflammation in our bodies. Like there are so many different reasons. There are, it's the foods that we're eating. It's, you know, the processed foods that we're eating, the over-the-counter meds that we're taking, the prescription meds that we're taking, the stresses that we have with our cortisol. We have a very, um, uh, get her done kind of society, like where we go, 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 we strive, strive, strive. We think we need to just do more, more, more. And um, I know from doing many, many pieces of content on lack of sleep, that lack of sleep is huge for so many people. And um, I've talked about it before. I actually don't do melatonin for myself because it makes me feel drunk. But I do take like an herbal blend. And you can look at that on my website. That's a it's, it's a sleep product. It's, it's just herbal. It's like a, it, they're kind of stinky, but that helps me to sleep. We have to fix our sleep because if you don't fix your sleep, 
The next day, your insulin resistance is up and your cortisol is up. And it's just not what you want. And that belly fat, we all might think that that, that belly fat is just annoying, but it's worse than that. It's really, really dangerous. And so getting inflammation down in your body is not just a really, you know, gosh, that, that's kind of a good idea. It's actually a really important idea. So having said that, let's see here. What did I miss? I feel like I missed something. Oh, Chewy, <laughs> you're sorry. I bet you are. Okay, so shared risk factors. Yeah, sedentary lifestyle, smoking, chronic stress. They all promote um, inflammation. And a couple of the things that I have done to really help inflammation, I would say the first, the number one thing that I have done that I noticed such a significant impact in my life, and I talk about it a lot, <laughs> you're funny, is um, I, I'm grain free. And a lot of people think to themselves, how could I possibly ever be grain free? Not me, but anybody like in general, because grains are so integrated into our life. And, you know, I always want to repeat this. You know, I don't believe that God made bad food because he didn't. We messed up our food supply. And then what we've done is we have eaten in a certain way and lived in a certain way where insulin resistance is just on the rise like this. And we have to stop the train. You know, it may have left the station, but we can at least turn the we can turn the track to go into a different direction. And I talk about that all the time with women. It's like, I understand these are not quick fixes. I get it, right? Like when you're insulin resistant and you have to get your morning sugars down, it could take up to a year. You want to get your high blood pressure down, it could take up to a year. But the truth is, is that where, you know, if you if you actually took some time to turn back around the bus, um, not only will you feel good and you'll get really good results in the process, but you'll be so dang proud of yourself. And you do have to overcome a lot of the stuff that we've been taught, right? It's not just a calorie in calorie out problem. It's not just a, um, I'm just going to stop there on that one. It's not a calorie in calorie out problem. Do calories matter? Sure. They play a part. They do. But it, they play a part as much as, um, because they're, the, it matters. You can't overeat your way to, you know, losing sizes. That's not how this works, right? However, your scale also is only one faceted. It only is measuring gravity. That's not measuring fat loss. It's not measuring your water retention or anything else that's going on in your body, which could be a million factors for any person. So it's only one. It's very flat in its thought process. But it's the same thing with um, calorie in, calorie out. No, this is a hormonal conversation. Male, female, it doesn't matter. Hormonal conversation. Cortisol is a hormone. Insulin is a hormone. Change the lens that you're looking at all of this through and you will change the way you're doing things. And then you will, by doing that, change the results that you're getting and not be so dang frustrated all the time on a hamster wheel because that is really frustrating. One billion diabetics in total in the world. That's insane, Julie. That is insane. And this is what I have found. I'll just give you a little insight. You know, being on social media, um, it's all over. I used to constantly say the standard American diet, but you know what? That's not true. I have people that reach out from India, Australia, Denmark, um, Belgium, Af South Africa, uh, the Caribbean, everywhere. It's everywhere because we have just, we've allowed things to be, in my opinion, because of course this hasn't been my source of study or my, my topic of study, um, but the more westernized a nation becomes, the worse off they are. And then it leads to metabolic disorders and then we've got issues, but they can be turned around. And so anyway, so number one, I'm grain free. That has taken away so much inflammation. I used to take a joint product for my joints all the time. It's a phenomenal product. Um, I, can, I can get people a link if they want that. Phenomenal. I was religious about taking it, but I don't need it anymore because my inflammation is so low. And um, 
that matters to me because my goal, I'm 59. My goal was to be able to be down on the floor with my grandbabies. So that's my goal. That's where I'm at. Um, that is probably one of the first things that I did in terms of really bringing down my inflammation. Um, and that coupled with being, I really don't eat processed food. I think that processed food just really, we used to eat processed food as maybe a treat or as um, like, maybe I shouldn't say processed food. I'm going to say sugared processed food because sugary foods used to be like as treats or desserts for a holiday. And now we eat them from the minute we wake up. We start with maybe um, a coffee shop, you know, sugared coffee. And then we move into our day with, you know, all sorts of treats all day long. Candy has become incorporated in our daily lives. So not only am I grain free, but then number two, I'm sugar free. And so my inflammation is way, way down. It's just way down naturally. So therefore, I'm not fighting that as I'm trying to accomplish other things when it comes to my health. And it took me a few years. Like, I'm not going to lie. I didn't just do it overnight. It's not like it, it doesn't take effort. It does take effort and it takes intention. But like, you know, I made, I learned how to make the coconut cream pie, like, and it wasn't even hard, you know, so maybe it's easier than you think it is. And you don't even know that it is. So that's just, there's that for, you know, substitute ingredients. That's what Julie's saying. Yeah, that's exactly what I did was I just, I, you guys, I'm Italian. Like the only reason I started with supplementation was because I thought that I couldn't change out my foods. Like for real, it was such a concern to me. Like I, I, I thought there's no way, like, how will I do this? This has been my entire life. We just, you eat, eat, eat. And then when you gain weight, you're told to lose weight. And then when you lose weight, you're told not to get too skinny. And everything is a celebration or everything is a, a reason to eat. You're happy, you're sad, you're excited, you're exhausted. It doesn't matter, right? You're supposed to just eat. And it's just the way that I was raised. And so I thought that I had to give all that up and I didn't at all at all. I just had to learn how to change up my ingredients. Um, but what I did do was I started with supplementation and I talk about it all the time. And I wanted to give you a couple of tips for you probably, maybe you even have these supplements in your cupboard right now, but these are supplements that can help you with inflammation specifically. And somebody had asked me about one of them today. So it kind of prompted my conversation in my head as to this is going to be, this is important information for people to know. Sometimes our supplement cupboards look like our makeup drawers. That is no bueno. Nobody wants that, okay? So if you have a supplement cupboard and you're like, I don't even know why I take this and I don't even know why I take that, well, let's just streamline everything and let's be targeted in what we take and not just take everything under the sun. And then let's make sure that you're actually buying something from a third-party tested company, a company that does third-party testing, because otherwise you don't even know what's in the bottle. Like don't do, don't waste your money because seriously is there's, you are investing your resources to, to, to have a difference. Okay. And when you know that things actually work, it's very magical. Okay. And then, um, let's just, uh, let's just see, maybe you already have some of these in your cupboard and you're good to go. Okay. So number one would be fish oil getting a really, really good fish oil. Now the things that I would look for in a fish oil, and of course, I already have everything on my website. You can look to see what I take if you want to. It's my first last name.com. I want something that's wild caught because if I'm not going to buy wild caught fish in the store, then I'm not going to have it in my supplement. I don't want extra inflammation. I don't want extra toxins. I want, um, I want something that is uh, going to be the, a really, really good source and a really good ratio of um, fish oil. So um, you can go to kirstenliebelt.com and underneath the, um, I think this is going to be under my third button. I'll just look it up. So anyway, a really good fish oil, very helpful for anti-inflammatory thought process. Yeah, it's the, uh, it's the third button that says extra help with insulin resistance. And it has the fish on there and you can look at that. Um, so maybe you already have a really good fish oil, but if you don't, that's a really good place to check. The second one would be a really good turmeric. You probably already know that turmeric is good for inflammation, right? Have you heard that? This is the problem. Most people don't know that turmeric is actually not very bioavailable, meaning that it doesn't absorb into your system very easily. And you wouldn't maybe think that, but it's just the truth. 
And so the turmeric that, and actually that's, I apologize, that's going to be on the second button. The turmeric is. This turmeric is 45 times more absorbable than an average turmeric, but maybe you're already taking a good one and good for you. If you have a good turmeric in your cupboard, good for you. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? But um, the one that I take is 40 times more absorbable. 400 milligrams of the turmeric that I take is equal to, this is literally a claim they make. So I'm, I'm, not, I'm not just making this up. And I don't make, I don't repeat things that they don't say, right? So 6,000 milligrams of somebody else's is 400 milligrams of mine. That's a lot. That means you'd have to really be taking a, a large amount from another company to get the same benefits. And they literally put on their, on, on their website, helps with pain, which nobody would ever say that. That's a, the P word. You don't use the P word when you're talking about supplements. Pain and discomfort from exercising, meaning inflammation that's caused. Got it? Okay. That's the turmeric one. And then the third one, uh, the probiotic, you guys. Yogurt's not enough. And especially if you're eating a yogurt that has sugar in it, stop. Just stop. Don't do that. Don't go backwards in what you're trying to accomplish here. Get yourself, if you want to do a yogurt, you, know, you can get a good kefir. I actually have not done kefir. I'm trying to think if I know of a brand though. I don't think I do. But a pro, uh, a Greek yogurt, you could do a Greek yogurt that's plain. Get full fat because again, you're not looking for the extra sugar in your life. And then you can sweeten it yourself and put some cinnamon in there, right? But a, um, a good probiotic, you want something that has active cultures in it. The one that I take has five strains and then it has a prebiotic, um, which sets your gut. You want something that's going to do that. You don't want a lame probiotic. That's not going to work. It's not going to stay alive in your stomach. You don't want that. Um, so a good probiotic. And I'm going to, before I jump off, I'm going to actually go back to the turmeric. The turmeric that I take has fenugreek in it. Does anybody know what the fenugreek, if you're in my, I was going to say if you're in my class, I don't really have a class. If you're in my group, you might already know what the fenugreek does for you. Does anybody know what the fenugreek helps with? Because if you're going to take turmeric, you might as well take a little extra, extra. And this is all, these are all extra helpers with insulin resistance. Get your inflammation down. Start going in the right direction. You'd be so surprised at how good you could possibly feel. So fenugreek helps with um Oh, plain Greek yogurt gives you enough. You do not need a tablet. I don't know about that, Gloria. Really? I've always done both. Um, but fenugreek helps with sugars. So having something that's anti-inflammatory and the fenugreek, that blend is a very beautiful blend. I would just like to say, I love, love, love having a good, good for your liver. The, the Yes, the turmeric is very good for your liver. That is very true. Very true. I know. It's just, I don't know. I feel like I was so raised in a medical world. And when I paused and asked, like, how can this possibly be that we don't have any natural answers? Like, didn't God give us a lot of what we already need? And and I do feel the question a lot about, you know, how, do, how can we say not to eat certain foods or whatever? And it's not because God made the food bad. It's just because we're now trying to heal. We're trying to turn back what we did. And so you have to be very intentional to turn it back. You have to fix what got you into the pickle to begin with. You have to fix it. Hey, Christy, good to see you. I'm just seeing you all the time today, aren't I? <laughs> it's so fun. It's just a party. So those are my recommendations. Cortisol is actually so connected with inflammation because then it's not, man, your body just can't do what it's supposed to do. We've got to get stress down. We've got to get um, inflammation down. And you can have so many different results with that. It is a party. Um, and so if you're not in the Facebook group, I did start day one challenge today. Uh, and we'll do five days every day. Next, tomorrow, we're going to do ingredient trade outs. So if you go to kirstenliebelt.com, let me tell you what you can find at my website. My first last name.com. 
You can find the Facebook blue button for the Facebook group and jump in there. You can find a free PDF that has recipes in it. You can find the trio of supplementation that helps with the insulin sensitivity. I talk about that all the time, all day, every day. FYI, if you see that glucose health is backordered where you live, please reach out to me. I'm the inventory girl for now. <laughs> I do have inventory. I've got some people, it's getting spoken for, but I just want you to know that. And then um, you can also find extra things like this. You can find out the, the ones that I've been taking for fish oil, turmeric, probiotic. You can find those extras if you are looking for a good source. Like I said, if you already have a good source, good. Very, very good. But if you've ran out or you don't have a good source, you might want to check that out. You might be very, very surprised at high, high quality third party testing, organic farming, just saying, makes a difference in everything that is being put into your body. Let's not make it worse. Let's make it better. So if you ever have any questions, reach out to me. My DMs are always open. And tomorrow we're going to do ingredient trade outs in the Facebook group. And again, if you have any questions on that, let me know. How does that sound? What do you think, Christy? Is it sold out? I don't think it's sold out. Let me see, Julie. Are you telling me it is or am I, are you asking? Let me check it. If you want me to put your name on the glucose product, I will, Julie. You have to just let me know, but let me check it here. And again, I'm, I'm fielding um, information from people around the country. So... It depends on where you live sometimes. So let's look it up together. Let's do it together, shall we? And, you know, that that's where I do feel like the, okay, so it's on back order. So it's not sold out. It's on back order. Yes, 2 p.m. Central Standard Time. Correct. Um, so, so if anybody does, if you guys are, privy to this information and you are on my lives or you're in my group or you hear me say it in my stories um, and you need me to put your name on a bottle, you just need to let me know that because, yep, I don't have limited um, stock, but I will always be watching everything for you guys. It's what I do. I just pay attention to make sure that everybody gets covered as much as humanly possible. And then I will keep you updated as much as I possibly can. So it's on back order, but that does not mean that it is um, completely gone for right now. So, and it depends on where you live. So anyway, in lieu of that though, I would highly recommend the turmeric with the fenugreek, get the fenugreek to help you with your sugars. Okay. But we'll just kind of, uh, We'll put together all of the best pieces. And again, food is a piece of the puzzle. So let's do food tomorrow and talk about some ingredient trade outs. Um, because there are basic, basic things that people just don't even know, right? Um, they just, they just don't know. I get, I'm the weird person that gets into conversations in the grocery store with people. <laughs> I'm just because not just randomly, I don't mean like, I mean, like, um, somebody might be looking at sweeteners or whatever. And I'm like, cause I know that I can help. I know that I can recommend something to them. Um, just because I have, I've made a lot of messes. I've made a lot of bad recipes to learn how to make better ones. And so I know I can help and stuff. So anyway, all right. Have a super blessed night. Really good to see you guys again. And every, for everybody that's in the group, I will see you tomorrow at 2 PM central standard time. See you later. You embarrass your kids all the time in the grocery stores because you'll talk to anyone. <laughs> Christy, it's so funny. Seriously, I, yeah, I ended up literally, it's great to see you too. I wrote down my name and just showed her my name. I'm like, I have some information on insulin resistance here. You can just find me on Facebook. There you go. <laughs> she was great. But people want help. They so badly want help. So it's very important anyway. All right. We'll see you tomorrow, Christy. Have a good night.